Hey, Daryl here in the JCR Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to install our Wrangler JL rear bumper. These things are really awesome and they have all the features you would expect from a bumper from JCR Off-Road. They have high lift jack holes. <laughs> Man, I love saying jack holes, it's hilarious. They keep the factory receiver and you keep the factory legal tow rating on your Jeep, that's important. They have D-rings, you can put some three-quarter inch tabs in in case you get stuck and need to recover yourself. They have backup sensor holes if you have the backup sensor group on your Jeep, or provide some plugs that kind of make them seamless and hide if you don't. They have holes for reverse lights or scene lights or whatever you want to put in there, and it has a spot to mount any of our tire carriers as well. Pretty easy to install, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get going. All right, so we've got to remove this plastic little mud guard here, and you do that with an eight millimeter socket or a 5 16 They're pretty similar. There's three bolts, one on the outside and two on the inside. Now we're gonna remove these side braces here, and we're gonna do that with a 16 millimeter socket. Four bolts, two on the bumper, two on the frame. You can remove these entirely. Once you get those bolts out, you go ahead and pull this bracket, you won't need it again. All right, now we're gonna disconnect this wiring here. We're gonna pop the connector off from the body, like that. This connector here as well. And then there's one in the back also. You can get this now or get it when you get the bumper looser. We'll try to grab it now. All right, grab onto this connector and grab a pick or a small screwdriver and open up this plastic piece by pushing it out like that, that gray piece. Push it down and pull the connector apart. Repeat the process on the opposite side of the mud guard and the bracket. You won't have any wiring to deal with though. All right, now we're gonna remove this bumper. If you have a tow hook, you're gonna have two bolts on the side and two bolts on the bottom on the driver's side. Just two bolts on the side on the passenger side. If you don't have a tow hook, you're just gonna have two bolts on the side on each side. All of them use an 18 millimeter socket. Well, it turns out I'm a liar. These bolts actually use a 21. I'm not sure if that's just because of the tow hook, but just be prepared, you may need a 21 millimeter socket as well. Whatever size they are, they've gotta come out. Now that this side is done, we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna remove these brackets entirely. They're indexed into the frame, so just to make it easier, we're gonna pull them. Do that with a 16 millimeter end wrench. Same on both sides, two nuts. All right, now once all the frame bolts are pulled on each side, we're gonna get rid of this cross member bolt, one on each side, 16 millimeter socket. All right, once everything is all loosened up, we can go ahead and pull this bumper all the way off. All right, if your Jeep came with backup sensors, that's those little round discs on the other side of this bumper. Our bumper has provisions for those, but first we have to extract them from the factory bumper. All right, so the first thing to do is remove all these connectors. There's a gray clip on each one. We need to pry that backwards with a pick or a screwdriver till it's opened up, and then press the clip towards the wiring and pull the connector off. Do that for all four of the backup sensors and the license plate light. All right, once your connectors are all disconnected, go ahead and take your tool or a flat blade screwdriver and pop all of these little Christmas trees type fasteners out of the bumper. Do it along the whole bumper. We're trying to get the whole wiring harness out. I caught one, it's a keeper. Anyways, once you get this thing out of there, keep it, we're gonna need it. Now we have to remove the backup sensors. It's a real treat. All right, these are three pieces. There's an outer ring, a middle ring, and an inner ring. And they're all gonna kinda give us a struggle, but we don't wanna break them. So be careful with these. Use a pick, use a flat blade screwdriver, whatever you have to do. The first thing that's gonna come off is this outer ring. And if you look down here on the sides, there's a little clip that we're gonna pull up. We're gonna do that on each side. 
and we're gonna work this outer ring up. All right, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you out of the bumper so it makes more sense. This outer ring has to come up, but it has this bottom portion that goes underneath the connector. So as you pry it up and work it around the outside, you have to kind of pull this way and come off. And this is really flexible, so you won't have any trouble with that at all. And then the middle ring, there's the connector right there. And you can see these have been on and off a billion times when we were prototyping. Then that's gonna pop out of there, and then this pulls out of the face of the bumper. Repeat that on the three other sensors. All right, here's the last one. Now I'm not a Jeep engineer, so I have no idea if these individual sensors have an individual place on the bumper. So just to be safe, make sure you put them in the same spot. So the outer wing one here goes on the outer wing of the bumper. Inner ones go in the same spot. You know what I mean. It probably doesn't matter, but let's not give ourselves any headaches. All right, we're gonna start with the passenger outside. Take the thickest part of the bezel and point it outward. You'll see some notches in the bumper that it's made to go into. Go ahead and push that in. Sometimes you need a rubber mallet to get it to sit flush. And once that's flush, put your sensor in from the back. Then on the inside, you're gonna see a slightly larger opening, and that is where the connector side goes. So just go ahead and push those in, and you'll see both of those clip together just like that. Now you can reattach these safety clips if you like, but it might be kind of a fight to get them back on there. There we go, not too bad. Now in the exact same way, go ahead and do the rest of the sensors. Now we're going to go ahead and reconnect this wiring harness. Remember, the connector goes on the driver's side. We're going to clip it in all of the sensors, leave it kind of loose for now. We'll have to find some places to zip tie it on the frame and on the body once we get it installed. There's going to be a little bit of extra wire, but that's fine. Like I said, we'll zip it once we get the bumper installed. A quick word, depending on your wiring harness, this might not be quite long enough to reach. So what we're gonna have to do is take this tape and just unwrap some of it. We're just gonna have to unwrap some of this harness. We may have to start up with the license plate too. We're just gonna get ourselves a little extra wire and then we'll retape it back up again. This is really just depending on your individual Jeep because it's really close. So you may not need to worry about this. All right, so what I did was I unwrapped this license plate light tape right there and I unwrapped the tape right here just to get me it's like about an inch or an inch and a half extra wire for this sensor. I'm going to go ahead and pull that back and then re-tape up this and since I don't need this license plate sensor or light sorry license plate light it's probably a really great idea to tape this up watertight so it doesn't short that circuit out. So we'll just tape that right to the harness. And now that I have enough wire there, I will tape this junction here just to protect these wires for that sensor. Good to go. If you're installing reverse lights or just general scene lights in the back bumper, now is a great time to do that, but you may have to reverse this bracket depending on your light manufacturer, just because this will help change the overall height of the light. And usually to do this, you're just gonna take an Allen tool and remove the screws on each side. Take the bracket, flip it, into the opposite orientation that it was before. And then reinstall all the hardware. Now depending on your light, before you tighten everything up, you may wanna put the attachment hardware in there because sometimes they won't fit back in there again just because of tight clearances. Now once you get your bracket flipped, you can install this and check and make sure that the light is centered up and down in the light hole. And we're just gonna loosely install the hardware for right now. We can adjust everything once the bumper is installed, but it's a little more difficult to get the lights in once the bumper is installed. 
So in the hardware kit comes two of these brackets right here. If your Jeep came with a tow hook, you're only gonna need one of them, but we're gonna give you hardware for both. Only use the hardware that we gave you on these brackets. This plate slides right into the frame rails, just like that. All right, now we're gonna put the new JCR bumper on, and you may have to kind of tilt it like this as you go in for it to go over the receiver hitch. And make sure that you don't pinch those wires that we talked about earlier and left loose if you have backup sensors. We're just gonna set it right here for now on the receiver and on the frame, and we'll work from the bottom with the bolts. All right, now it's time to loosely install the bolts in this bumper. We're gonna provide all new hardware for you. On the sides of the frame, you're gonna use these larger fine thread metric bolts. They're gonna have an 8.8 .8 on the head. You're gonna use two bolts per side, two bolts, two washers. That's on each side of the frame. If your Jeep came with a tow hook, it's gonna have some factory weld nuts installed on the driver's side bottom of the frame. If that's the case, you're gonna use two more of these larger fine thread metric bolts. Remember, 8.8 .8 stamped on the head and two washers underneath here. If your Jeep didn't have a tow hook and you're using that nut plate that we gave you on this side, you were gonna use a half inch bolt on the bottom. So half inch coarse thread, three hash marks on the bottom. This is for the driver's side. So two bolts, two washers on the driver's side. On the passenger side, you're always gonna use that nut insert plate that we gave you. And on that plate, you're always gonna use half inch coarse thread with the three hash marks right there. Go ahead and install everything loosely. On the passenger side, we're gonna make sure that those nut plates that we inserted are centered in the holes, and then we're gonna use these coarse thread bolts on that side. They have the three kind of hash pattern on there, coarse thread. And we're gonna carefully start those a few threads without moving that plate. Both, both of those go like that. Make sure you use the washers we provide on there. Then on the passenger side, side frame, once again, we're gonna use these big fine thread metric bolts. They say 8.8 .8 on them. And we are just gonna loosely thread these in as well. Two bolts, two washers. All right, leave everything loose for now and then we'll check the alignment on the bumper. So we gave you quite a bit of adjustment here on these brackets, only because the JL tub moves quite a bit on the frame. So you wanna make sure that you don't push this bumper tight up against there because it will, it will hit that sheet metal. So you kinda of wanna pull it out and give yourself plenty of room and then make sure the opposite side matches. And then once that happens, you can tighten down the bolts. All right, once you have all these bolts loosely installed, go ahead and check the fitment of your bumper, make sure everything is level, make sure the distance between the bumper and the tub is the same on the driver and the passenger side. And once that's good, we can tighten all these bolts down. The larger metric bolts are going to use a 22 millimeter, you probably can't see that, a 22 millimeter socket, and we're gonna torque them to 65 foot pounds. So I'm gonna set my torque wrench at 65 foot pounds. So that's all of the larger metric bolt. That's gonna be the bolts on the side of the frame rail, driver's side, passenger side, and lower bolts if your Jeep came with a factory tow hook. Torque those down to 65 foot-pounds. All right, the half-inch bolts, like on the passenger side or on the driver's side, if you don't have a tow hook, we're gonna to torque those to 45 foot-pounds. All right, now go ahead and tie up this wiring harness if you have backup sensors. In some spots, you can get creative, like we can use this clip in this hole right here on the tub. And then in some spots, you'll have to use a zip tie or whatever you need to do just to keep that wiring from falling down. Now we're gonna reconnect this wiring harness here. And like I said before, this is only if you have the factory backup sensors. Push the clip down and then push this back in the hole where it came from and then reconnect the wiring in the same holes. Now the last step for the bumper is to adjust these lights, center them up in the hole, and then tighten them down. And you can go ahead and wire those the way of your choosing. All right, if your Jeep doesn't have backup sensors, we supply four of these little plastic plugs here. They're textured in black, just like the bumper. They're gonna kind of disappear when you push them in. But to keep them secure so they don't fly out, go ahead and use a few dabs of RTV. You don't have to go crazy with this. Uh, you're not really sealing anything. You're just gonna hold them in with that RTV. So once you push them in, 
you can wipe that RTV off and then you won't have to worry about them flying out in the car wash or down the highway or anything like that. All right, so our bumpers already have a spindle to accept our tire carriers, but if you're not installing a tire carrier right now, we wanna protect this machine surface. So what we do is we give you two of these plastic caps. They're black and textured just like the powder coat of the bumper, and you're gonna install those just so nothing gets in there, dirt, moisture, rust, or whatever. So the best thing to do is take a little bit of RTV and put a small bead right on this cap all the way around. and then go ahead and press it into place and then wipe off the excess. Go ahead and do that on the bottom as well and that'll make sure that when you're ready to install a tire carrier you won't have to sand out the inner surface. See? Easy peasy. We have some more videos for you. If you're installing our universal license plate relocation bracket, you can watch that video. Or if you're installing any of our tire carriers, go ahead and watch those videos on the specific product pages where you purchase those products. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything really, give us a call 269-353-1184 or an email at tech at jcr.us. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for being part of the JCR Off-Road family and I'll talk to you soon.